Hey everyone and welcome to the Mark 10 Mission. We're so glad you are here to join us as we gather together in Jesus' name. Today we are entering into Holy Week. This is the most important week of the year and the time we have been building towards ever since we began Lent on Ash Wednesday. Holy Week is a chance for us to journey with Jesus through the final days of his life. We have chosen three key moments to focus on. We'll begin with Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem when the crowds cheered on Palm Sunday. We'll then move to the canicle, the upper room, and celebrate the Last Supper with Jesus and his closest friends. Finally, we will join Jesus on Good Friday, hear a section of the Passion and encounter our Saviour as he dies on the cross for us. We hope you can enter into the readings, imagine the scenes and pray with us. We begin by hearing the words of the Holy Gospel from Palm Sunday. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem, in sight of Bethphage and Bethany, close by the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go off to the village facing you, and as soon as you enter it, you will find a tethered colt that no one has yet ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone says to you, what are you doing? Say, the master needs it and will send it back here directly. They went off and found a colt tethered near a door in the open street. As they untied it, some men standing there said, What are you doing untying that colt? They gave the answer Jesus had told them, and the men let them go. Then they took the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on its back, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, others greenery which they had cut in the fields. And those who went in front and those who followed were all shouting, Hosanna! Blessings on him who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heavens. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The people in the gospel shouted, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. At the beginning of Holy Week, we celebrate Palm Sunday. This is the moment where Jesus entered the holy city of Jerusalem riding on a colt. That's a young donkey that no one has ever ridden before. As the gospel says, the people laid their cloaks before him on the road. They tore palm branches from the trees and laid them on the ground or waved them above their heads. The people were welcoming a king. They created a carpet of cloaks to honour the one they believed would lead them to victory and freedom. Through Holy Week, we will see that this was exactly what Jesus had come to do. But the victory and freedom would be won in a way none of them could imagine. Although Jesus was welcomed as a king, he knew that he was also entering the lion's den. The week ahead would be the most important and dangerous of his life. Although many in Jerusalem were delighted to see him, the city was full of enemies. Whilst the crowds cheered, the Jewish leaders looked on. Who was this man who dared come into their city like a leader? 
they knew that Jesus had spoken against them. He said that they were not leading people in the right way. They plotted to get rid of him. Jerusalem was also full of Roman soldiers. The Romans controlled the land where Jesus lived and were always on the lookout for trouble. They'd be ready to crush anyone who challenged them. Amidst all the cheering and palm waving, Jesus is quiet. He is the humble king who enters not with trumpets and an army at his back, but quietly and riding on a donkey. It reminds us of the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the streets. As we begin our journey with Jesus, I invite you to close your eyes and imagine the scene with me. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to be still. Jesus is here with you. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear the joyful shouts of the crowd. See how they lay their cloaks on the dusty road at the gates of the city. See the way they wave the palm branches above their heads. See Jesus as he moves through the crowd, calm, humble, and riding on a donkey. He moves closer to you. He is happy to see the people, but there is sadness too. Jesus is in front of you. You could lay your cloak down, you could wave a palm, but as Jesus looks at you, it's clear he wants something different from you. He asks for your love. Come with me, Jesus says. I need my friends on the journey that lies ahead. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Give me joy in my heart, give me praising. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Give me joy in my heart, give me praising. Keep me praising till the end of day And I will sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings 
the joy of Palm Sunday, we move forward four days to Holy Thursday. Jesus is ready to gather and celebrate the Passover with his closest friends. They gather in an upper room and there participate in the greatest meal ever eaten, the Last Supper. Be still now. Imagine yourself in the upper room. The candles are lit. The table is laid and Jesus is about to speak. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As they were eating, he took bread. And when he said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them. Take it, he said. This is my body. Then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he handed it to them and all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood, the blood of the covenant poured out for many. In truth, I tell you, I shall never drink wine any more until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After the Psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Last Supper was the final meal Jesus ate with his friends before he died. It was a meal of sacrifice. The Last Supper was a Passover meal. Now Jesus and his friends were Jewish, and even to this day, the Passover is the most important meal of the year for Jews. It was done in remembrance of the first Passover, when the Jews were slaves in Egypt. God promised them through the prophet Moses that if they killed a perfect spotless lamb as a sacrifice and its blood was spread across the door frames, this would be a sign that death should pass over that home and the people inside would be saved. God made this covenant promise to the Jewish people in Egypt and at the Last Supper, a new covenant was made. Jesus gathered with his closest friends at the Passover table. And as they were eating, he took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, take this all of you and eat it. This is my body. And then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which is poured out for you and for many. I wonder what Jesus' friends thought when they heard these words. The words were new to his friends, but they aren't new to us. We hear them each time we go to mass. They're spoken by the priest over the bread and wine on the altar. At the Last Supper, Jesus gave his friends and gave us a wonderful gift, his body and blood. 
Soon, Jesus would die, rise again, and go back to the Father. But at the Last Supper, he gave us his body and blood, so that he will always be with us in the world. Jesus is always present with us. And at Mass, when we receive the bread and wine, his body and blood, he is with us in a very special way. At the Last Supper, Jesus showed his friends that he would be a sacrifice. He was the new lamb killed to save his people. The next day, he would go to the cross. His body would be broken and his blood poured out to save us from death. Each and every time we go to Mass, Jesus is there. The altar is the place he offers himself as a living sacrifice. I wonder if next time you're at Mass, at school or church, you can remember that Jesus is there on the altar. He is fully present, loving you and giving himself for you as the perfect sacrifice. This is my body In the garden, Jesus was arrested by guards from the temple. He was taken to the high priest Caiaphas, and there the Jewish leaders accused him of many things and sentenced him to die. They were not allowed to kill a person, only the Romans could do that. So they took Jesus to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. The Roman governor brought Jesus out in front of the people 
and they cried, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be taken away and crucified. Father Henry will now read the gospel account of what happened. It's quite long, so make sure you are comfortable and still. Try to picture what happens as you listen to the words. And remember, when you hear this, that Jesus did it all because he loves you. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. So Pilate, anxious to placate the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and having ordered Jesus to be scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away to the inner part of the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called the whole cohort together. They dressed him in purple, twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on him. And then they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed and spat on him. And they went down on their knees to do him homage. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the purple and dressed him in his own clothes. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he refused it. Then they crucified him and shared out his clothing, casting lots to decide what each should get. It was the third hour when they crucified him. The inscription giving the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And they crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, Aha! So you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Then save yourself. Come down from the cross. The chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves in the same way. They said, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now for us to see it and believe. Even those who were crucified with him taunted him. When the sixth hour came, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. This means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, Listen, he is calling on Elijah. Someone ran and soaked a sponge in vinegar and putting it on a reed, gave it him to drink, saying, Wait and see if Elijah will come to take him down. But Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The centurion who was standing in front of him had seen how he had died, and he said, In truth, this man was a son of God. There were some women watching from a distance. Among them were Mary of Magdala, Mary who was the mother of James the Younger, and Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and look after him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women there who had come up to Jerusalem with him. It was now evening, and since it was preparation day, that is the vigil of the Sabbath, there came Joseph of Arimathea, 
a prominent member of the council, who himself lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God, and he boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate, astonished that he should have died so soon, summoned the centurion and inquired if he was already dead. Having been assured of this by the centurion, he granted the corpse to Joseph, who brought a shroud, took Jesus down from the cross, wrapped him in the shroud, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary of Magdala and Mary the mother of Joseph were watching and took note of where he was laid. Hi everyone. We've already been thinking about the events of Holy Week and we've been walking with Jesus through the biggest days of his mission on earth to save us. Right now, we're going to zoom in and focus our attention to one particular moment during these important events of Jesus' life, the moment when he was dying on the cross. Do you remember what the day Jesus died is called? If you thought Good Friday, well done. But have you ever thought about how strange it is that we call it good? It seems like a terrible thing that Jesus died on the cross. We might wonder why this had to happen. It might help us if we think about it like this. None of us are perfect. And sometimes we choose to turn away from God by our sins. We'd rather do things our way than God's way. Because of sin, we were separated from God. But God the Father loves us so much that he sent his son, Jesus, to save us from our sins. Have you ever gone through a hard time? Maybe something difficult happened in your family that made you feel sad or afraid. Maybe you've been hurt by a friend. Maybe you felt lonely or misunderstood. But because Jesus suffered and died on the cross for you, he understands you perfectly when you're having a hard time. The night before he died, Jesus' closest friends ran away because they were afraid. This probably made Jesus feel so sad. He also knows what it feels like to be misunderstood. Even though he had done wonderful things for so many people, not everyone believed that he was truly God, and so they turned away from him. If you've ever wondered if you're loved, you can find out the answer. Just look at Jesus on the cross. Even if you were the only person in the whole world, Jesus still would have died to save you. Close your eyes for a moment. Now imagine that you are standing right beneath Jesus' cross. You feel a gentle hand on your shoulder, and when you look, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is standing next to you. Together you both look up at Jesus. You can see that he is in pain and yet his eyes are full of love as he looks down at you. He gently smiles and says, this is how much I love you. You can open your eyes. This is why we call this day Good Friday. It was the day that God showed his great love for us. We no longer have to be afraid of anything because we are never alone and we are loved. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I invite you to close your eyes and to be still. Jesus, you are here. You are waiting to speak with me. I open my heart to listen to you.
Thank you for dying for me on the cross. Help me to remember that because of your love for me, I am never alone, and I never have to be afraid. You are with me in all things, and your love is stronger than anything else I might face in my life. Bring me deeper into your merciful heart during these holy days. Amen. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Jesus' body was laid in the tomb and a stone rolled across the entrance. Everyone thought he'd gone, but on the third day he would rise again. The next time we gather, we'll celebrate Jesus' resurrection at Easter. 
We hope that in the meantime, you can make it to church over the Easter period and take part in the Triduum. We encourage you now to spend a few moments thinking about everything you've heard today. It will probably seem strange to quickly get back into your day. You might like to spend a little time talking to those you are with about how it's made you feel. Thank you for joining us today. We pray you have a blessed Holy Week and we'll see you again soon. Bye everyone.